please uh, give him a big app promotion summit welcome to the virtual stage over to you alex thanks a lot jen hi everyone i hope that you're all doing well uh, i'm super excited to be here to be here today to talk about pricing strategies for subscription based mobile app uh, I will make a 25 minute presentation, uh, but just before starting a few words on myself. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm an investor at Invest Eurasio, which is a pan-European fund uh, investing in venture and based in Paris. We invest across all the sectors, but we have built a strong track record in the mobile app uh, ecosystem. I've invested into mobile apps like Zenly, Yubo or Deezer, into mobile app studio like OMA and MWM, or even into tools for the ecosystem like Adjust. Um, on the, when I'm not working at Invest, uh, I have two sides projects. One of them is a newsletter called uh, Overlooked, where I write about a uh, surprising overlooked trend, uh, uh, tech trend in Europe. And the other one is AppFuel, which is why I'm here today. It's the, inspiration station for our builder it's a place where we are sharing the screens and flows of the best mobile apps as well as key insights to make your mobile app successful in terms of business perspective um, how this uh, project around pricing started um, as you all know uh, about consumer subscription software has become a hot topic especially for us investors uh, with the first outstanding successes like Duolingo or Calm, uh, which are both unicorns. And why this is the case, um, I believe that we see several things that are important. Uh, first of all, is now customers are used to pay via subscription with pioneer apps like Netflix or Spotify. Uh, but we also believe that the space has been maturing and the infrastructure is there to set up and manage subscriptions with mobile SDK, payment infrastructure, and tools like Revenue Cat. And nonetheless, what we see is that the playbooks to start using and growing a subscription in a mobile app have not been written uh, yet. Um, and I started this project around subscription to contribute to uh, these playbooks. Um, and I believe that pricing was a good starting point because, you know, as a generalist investor, I have the chance to look at both SaaS companies and consumer subscription uh, software companies. And that, uh, I build the conviction that there are many optimizations that can be brought to the consumer uh, software, uh, consumer subscription world uh, by taking into account the, most of the learnings that uh, we have on SaaS, especially around pricing. Um, and uh, I decided to start a research project on, 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 the, on this topic of pricing by uh, building the, this crowdsourced Google Sheet with the US pricing of more than 100 apps. And uh, on the side, I also uh, dig into uh, activation flows of many uh, consumer-based uh, subscription apps. And uh, in this presentation, what I will do is that I will share my quantitative and qualitative learnings um, and obviously, uh, this is an open-ended exploration. Uh, um, many things can be improved, and I have so many other topics that I want to dig into. But it's the first glimpse of uh, what I've, I, I've tried to, that what I've discovered in the space. Uh, quickly, a first cl clarification on the how I view uh, consumer uh, subscription uh, software. Uh, I believe that we can divide apps into three main categories. Um, uh, pay to use apps, uh, which are apps where you will, uh, if you don't pay for the application, you will not access to the core experience of the, of the application. For instance, if you don't uh, pay for Netflix, uh, you can watch a show. Uh, some apps are giving a glimpse of the experience with a, a subset, a super small subset of features of a limited library of content. But in all this app, if you don't pay, you will, it, it will be impossible to be a used uh, hooked users. Uh, second category are pay to upgrade uh, application. Most people call them uh, freemium apps. Uh, but the idea here is to give most of the experience for free, uh, especially the core primitive of the application, uh, writing a note when you are Evernote, participating into a live when you are on Ubo, uh, following a class when you are on Duolingo. 
and uh, this app will monetize only a small subset of users who are, who are willing to pay for additional features. And then the last category of uh, subscriptions that we see in mobile apps are pay to pay less subscriptions. Uh, uh, and most of these apps are transactional in the sense that you will pay uh, for a product or a service when you are using them. So paying for Uber, for uh, to, you are using, when you use Uber, you pay for a ride. And these apps are implementing subscription, but in a completely other way than the two first categories uh, in order to uh, retain users on the platform by offering them savings if they are really uh, uh, easy users. Um, and the, in this, um, in, in my in my studies, I, I would say that I, I'm focused more on the first two categories. Uh, it's a completely uh, different mindset uh, with a completely uh, different uh, stakes uh, to talk about uh, pay to pay less apps. Um, and um, and yeah, let's jump straight in. Uh, so what I have to share is some quantitative learning on the one side, and then the framework to try to set up your uh, subscription, um, starting uh, with quantitative learnings from the 100 apps that we've benchmarked. Uh, what we see is that most apps uh, are referring uh, both a monthly and an annual plan with a, a discount around 50% between the uh, annual plan and the monthly one. Um, here it's important to remember why it's important to push your users uh, to go for an annual plan versus a monthly one. I believe that there are three main goals. The first one is to get pay prompt to be able to reinvest immediately in the growth. Another one is that you have a psychological effect where users are more committed when they are com when, when they are paying for an annual plan versus uh, a monthly one and they will be more they, they, they will have a higher usage of your app and then there is also this idea that it's a way to mitigate the risk of churn as you know churn is a big topic especially in a consumer uh, subscription uh, in the consumer subscription world uh, where most have a uh, retention rate below 50 percent um, and what I discovered also with this uh, benchmark is that uh, there is this new trend that uh, of apps that are promoting lifetime plan. For instance, Calm has a uh, 399 lifetime plan. Re Reflectly has a 299 uh, lifetime plan. It's, it's, it's super interesting uh, to, to set up this plan. And I believe that there are many benefits like the feeling of uh, uh, owning your app uh, if uh, these apps are priced correctly, it's also a way to generate revenues that are superior to your lifetime value. Um, and I believe also when you keep start a project, it's a great way to build an early community. Uh, in the business world, it reminds me of Aptimo where you have those deals for early users who are willing to pay a lifetime plan to get, to, to get all your users, to give you feedback and uh, Feeling and feel that they are part of a community. Uh, so that's for the quantitative learning, high dispersion of prices uh, uh, when you look at all company, uh, at all categories, but when you zoom in into certain categories, it makes more sense. And what I wanted to do today is to share with you a framework uh, around pricing, a four-step four step framework. Uh, I will first discuss about the pricing point and then I will dig into, um, into how to push uh, your, a subscription into the app going for, from where you put your activation flow in the user experience to the activation flow per se. And then the last step uh, and the most important, important one is the pricing page. So I will try to share uh, both quantitative and qualitative learnings around the, the two, two, four steps. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right in and talk about the pricing point. Um, here, um, I believe that um, when you want to pick a pricing point, you have to keep in mind several things uh, when you are in the consumer world. Uh, first, and this is a general advice, I would say that you have to calibrate your pricing based on the value that you're providing to the users. And usage frequency is a good one to to, 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 is a good proxy to do that. If your app is daily, you can try, uh, 
a higher price than if you have an app that is used monthly. Um, that's one point. Another one is that um, uh, in consumer, um, I dis uh, there is a, a, a pricing threshold that you don't have in the B2B world. Uh, and it's not, uh, as, it, it's not a surprise that most apps are priced below $15. Uh, it's because even unconsciously, consumers are comparing your app to the price of a Shopify, uh, a Spotify, sorry, or a Netflix subscription, uh, even if you are not in the, the same category. And um, this entry price is something that is super hard to go beyond, and it's something that you don't have to in the business world. And last point um, is that uh, when you are trying to benchmark your price uh, with tiers, uh, you have to focus on your category uh, and also on the type of subscription. It's not the same uh, if you are paid to use or paid to upgrade or paid to pay less uh, subscription. And I believe that it's also a thing that you, can, you should take into account. Um, second step of the framework after the, the pricing is uh, this idea of where do I uh, push my activation flow. Uh, by activation flow, what I mean is the sequence where uh, you will pitch the app to the user and at the end display your pricing page to have him uh, uh, subscribe. Um, and what I see is that there are three main uh, categories, uh, three main ways to push your, push your subscription. Uh, one of them is the super early activation, uh, where you will you will push the the, the 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 activation flow as soon as the user opens the app. This means that either you have educated the user before downloading the app uh, on the app store, for instance, or uh, or uh, <clears throat> or you have an app where you have dark patterns that, uh, and it's something that we see less and less in the app store, obviously, but. It was something that uh, I, I saw uh, during my benchmark. The second way to push your activation flow uh, is uh, during the early activation. This is something that we see a lot for pay to use app where you will push uh, the subscription at the end of the onboarding after clarifying the value proposition of the app and after having engaged the users and the last option more applicable for pay to, pay to upgrade app or premium apps is to push it um, after when the user is hooked uh, and you want to give him uh, special features to upgrade uh, uh, his experience. Uh, so better with examples. So let's start with the super early activation, uh, talking, taking the example of Splice. Here you see you download the app, uh, first thing you open it uh, and Splice push you to subscribe uh, with, the, with the weekly plan. Um, second example, uh, at the end of the onboarding flow, uh, Luni and uh, its uh, fitness app where you will do the onboarding, uh, you will engage with the app by customizing your experience, putting your information on your gender, your goal with the app, et cetera, et cetera. And then they will push the activation flow. Uh, and last example, Duolingo uh, and uh, during, uh, with Duolingo, you. They, they don't talk about uh, activation during the onboarding. Uh, you start to get hooked into the app. You want to make several classes, and then you discover that uh, if you want to have special features to upgrade your experience, you will have to pay for a subscription. And at this point only, uh, Duolingo will push you the activation flow. Uh, so that's for step, one, step two, where you put your activation flow uh, in, the user in the user journey. And then step three is to work on the activation flow. Um, I told you what I mean by activation flow. And by looking at the activation flow of more than 30 apps, I believe that there are a set of best practices that you could have in mind while designing uh, uh, your, your activation flow. And I will try to be super practical by looking at three examples that have a great activation flow. I will look at uh, uh, Duolingo, I will look at Mojo, which is a French-based creative app to make uh, uh, professional uh, stories uh, to share on social media and Reflectly, which is a personal journaling app. Uh, and on the way, I will try to share um, learning. So first, Duolingo, uh, it's a two-step activation flow where you will have this carousel uh, 
uh, highlighting the benefits of pay of the paying plan and then the pricing page. And here the learning and the things that I like uh, about what they do is that first, uh, I, I like this idea of quantifying the benefits of becoming a paying uh, users by telling them uh, if you're a plus runner, you will be more likely to finish the course compared to free users. Uh, second, by Duolingo has this dual business model similar to Spotify where the users are monetized to advertising and paid users are monetized to subscription. And here on the activation slot, Duolingo is, is educating the users around this. Uh, you will support free education, you will remove ads by being a subscriber. And uh, here you see that um, this is the it's a specific activation flow for a pay to upgrade and not a pay to use app where the benefits highlighted in the carousel uh, will be extra extra features uh, like uh, by being able to learn while being offline, uh, removing the limitation on the usage by uh, not having this uh, uh, hurts uh, this hurts uh, when when you're learning. Um, and uh, so that's for Duolingo. Then a second example uh, would be the second example is is Mojo. Uh, here, what is interesting is that um, all the core pages of the product, meaning the pages where you are uh, building your own story, uh, are uh, pushing you to become paying customers. As uh, as you can see, most of the effects are only included in the in the pro plan and when you are building your own story and you want to add a nice effect, but you will click on that and bam, you will be redirected to the pricing page. So that's very interesting. Uh, then uh, another thing that I like is this uh, carousel that falls in the background uh, to showcase the main benefit of the product. I like this scrolling, uh, scrolling strategy as the pricing page remains dynamic. Uh, pushing new benefits while the user is trying to take a decision on whether he wants or not to purchase the subscription. Um, and third, um, third example, let's look at uh, Reflectly. Uh, Reflectly has, has this great activation flow where they have a page that you will swipe vertically and that is uh, divided into key building blocks that are great. The first one, uh, is that they use also this uh, quantitative uh, element uh, to push you to become a paying user. Like in Duolingo, you will be 38% happier by using Reflective Premium. I don't know, I, I don't know honestly what it means to be 38% happier, but uh, it's interesting to try to quantify the experience of being a paying user. Then you will have a block with the key qualitative benefit of being a paying user. Uh, then you will have uh, the social proof uh, with the rating of the app and and I think it's super interesting to have this also uh, uh, an individual comment uh, showing a user that uh, has his life uh, changed by the use of Reflectly uh, and then you will have two other sections uh, with a, a side by side between the free plan and the paid plan and a Q&A for uh, to, to answer the, the most common question that users could have uh, including uh, a question around the percentage of happiness uh, uh, of the super percentage of happiness if you are paying users. Okay, and now uh, let's talk about the last uh, step of the framework uh, with the pricing page. Um, so first, the the good starting point I would say is to is to say. Uh, I will push two, two options to the user, a monthly plan and an annual plan. And then I will um, push the users to go for the annual plan by giving them a discount between 35% and 50% compared to the annual plan. And on top of this, I will add also a free trial period, which is anywhere between three days to one month if you are Apple and you are trying to promote a new service like Apple Arcade and Apple Music, but I guess uh, you will have a shorter period of time because we are not all uh, uh, at Apple. Uh, so same thing here, super concrete examples uh, with best practices around pricing pages. Um, and uh, starting with Reflectly again, here uh, what I like is the, the special design to highlight the, the paying plane, expliciting the percentage of savings that you are making if you are going for uh, uh, an annual plan compared to 
uh, monthly plan. I also like uh, this idea of pushing a specific offer that is buying uh, the only during the inboarding and that you will not uh, have later on. Um, this idea of dynamic pricing is something that we are starting to see in the, in the subscription app for consumers, but I believe that there are many uh, inventions that can be done around this. Uh, with Duolingo, same, uh, we have a specific design uh, to promote the annual plan compared to the, 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 monthly, the monthly plan. Another thing that is important when you are uh, push, uh, presenting your price is that you uh, make them comparable between your monthly plan, your annual plan, your lifetime plan, on, and, and you can do this either by putting all the prices on the monthly or even on a daily basis. Um, then other examples, um, other, other interesting examples uh, uh, on Feedbud, uh, what is interesting is that uh, what they decided uh, is to push only uh, the annual plan. Uh, obviously, if you want to dig, you can find the monthly plan, but I, I think it's super interesting to push forward this logic that you, you need to push your user to go for annual by uh, removing, uh, removing uh, from the, your pricing page uh, a potential comparison with the monthly plan. Uh, that's that's interesting. Um, and uh, maybe other other small examples uh, with Lightsum. Uh, I like the idea that for each plan they give you um, a, a qualitative goal that you can reach if you pay for the plan. So uh, one month you improve your daily habits, but if you subscribe for 12 months, then you will become an expert on your well-being. So that's super interesting to, to do this. Um, and uh, another pricing page that I like a lot is the one of Jumbo. So it's bullish to do that, but what they do is uh, you pay whatever you want uh, and they give you a suggestion to what you should pay uh, as a plus or a pro uh, customer. So that's, that, that is also super interesting. Um, uh, and uh, and maybe by on, maybe on Canva, um, what, what is interesting in their pricing plan uh, is that they are building a plan, and it's also something that we see with Mojo. Uh, they they have a paying plan that is mainly dedicated to prosumers, meaning that uh, not the uh, random individual that want to make uh, uh, his next his next uh, Instagram stories or whatever but the people that uh, have a small businesses, are a small mar uh, merchant, uh, people who are uh, creators, influencers, and are willing to pay uh, to have uh, something that they can use on mobile and that feels professional. And Canva is doing this uh, with a plan that is uh, uh, dedicated to them. And for instance, by classical things would be to remove the watermark, uh, to remove the, wat the, 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 the watermark from the paying plan. Uh, when you do uh, a specific uh, stories for uh, Mojo or a specific presentation when you're uh, with Canva. Um, all right, um, I think that we are done. So to sum up, uh, you, I, I shared uh, quantitative learnings, but also these four step frameworks that could be useful when you are thinking of implementing a subscription into your app. Um, starting with where you put your activation flow in the user journey to the activation flow and then to, to, to the pricing page. Um, 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 obviously, this project remain uh, an open-ended exploration and uh, I'm working on, on some of the, uh, of the other topics listed in the, in the slide. So for instance, uh, how, how to implement uh, a lifetime pricing, uh, uh, what bundle should you try to build? Uh, um, what, how do you do to upsell uh, a subscription in the in the consumer world, which is something that we see a lot uh, in the B2B world, where a lot of companies are are, are discussing uh, a net dollar retention, how to extend your ATV per per customers. Uh, I'm also super interested into uh, dynamic pricing uh, logics. Uh, when should you push a special offer uh, during the user journey, during special events, so for, uh, and for instance, for 
the Black Friday or the Cyber Monday. Um, and then I'm also trying to work more on uh, my pay to pay less uh, subscriptions, uh, starting with the, the, food, uh, the food industry. So I'm working uh, on all these topics and with this friend facing to talk with you about them if you are interested to, to have a chat on them. Uh, it will be a pleasure. Um, so thank you so much for listening. Um, if you want to dig into more activation flow and pricing page, go to the actual websites. And uh, if you want to have a chat on uh, on this topic, on all the adjacent topics that I just mentioned, feel free to write me an email at ad at edinvest.com. Uh, thanks a lot again. And uh, I don't know if you have time for Q&A. Um, that, that was great, Alex. Thanks so much. We've been doing this for eight years, I don't think, in New York, London, Berlin. And uh, I don't think we've ever had anyone come, come along and, you know, deliver this kind of, you know, great analysis of the sector. And uh, it's really great what you're doing. So, yeah, I just want to say a big thank you. Um, what I suggest is there's a few questions in the chat and people mm -hmm. asking, are you going to share the slides? So if you could um, head over now to the to swap card maybe and, uh, you know, reply in there, I think that would be great. And we can continue the conversation in there. Okay. Um, and, and I guess, yeah, people asking for the slides, we'll, we'll sort of share a recording of this, but um yeah hopefully you can you can sort of follow up there but yeah thanks for such a great presentation and hope we can see you in person one day in berlin or london yeah yeah i hope to okay. uh, thanks a lot uh, right. for listening thanks a lot for the invitation obviously uh, i will share the slides and uh, i will answer uh, to the to the questions on the swap card cool all right thanks a lot